<laughs> All you will see is I'll be looking at the mirror like 100 times per minute. Right? I'm checking my appearance and what I think was the biggest biggest mistake I ever did and you want to avoid all the mistakes that I made hey guys it's Miss K Chris and welcome back to my channel today I'm going to share with you the biggest mistake I ever made when I was applying for the flight attendant job keep on watching Okay, so I made a blog post about this on the Fly High Manila's website. I will link it down below if you want to read the blog version. But right now, we're doing a video version of it because I saw a lot of people like that blog post. And I want to share the same information for all those of you who don't really, you know, don't really have the time to read blogs and like to consume their content more on video okay so I have been just a little background I have been applying for the flight attendant job when I was 19 years old I got hired when I was 23 and uh, I finally got hired for international flight attendant position at 27 so it's a total of eight years if you count all those years that uh, I was applying and most of the time it's not every day I'm applying it's like Anytime that there is a hiring, I will be going there. And that usually is every three months or sometimes there's a year that I would apply like twice a year or three times a year. Um, and it has been so hard for me before because there were no vloggers before. There were no blog, even bloggers that was willing to share their tips or willing to share where they failed <laughs> when they were applying or the mistakes that they made when they are applying. Um, some friends are nice enough to tell me, but you know what? Um, when they're already a flight attendant, it's really hard to get a hold of them. Um, their schedule is different and also they have signed a contract that they, they can't really release any information about their job so yeah they're really mom about it so that's what i'm doing right now i'm gonna tell you my eight years worth of <laughs> trial and error <laughs> and what i think looking back now after being a flight attendant and being able to go through all that application what i think was the biggest biggest mistake i ever did when i was applying so here it is my biggest mistake when I was applying for the flight attendant position is I was never really fully prepared for what's gonna happen on the application day. So you gotta wrap your mind around this because when I was a beginner and I mean like I was just trying to be a flight attendant I haven't really obsessed about it yet or I'm not passionate about it I just want to try my luck I would usually spend most of my time when I'm preparing my preparation time is spent on trying to find the right lipstick trying to find the right outfit trying to know how to do my makeup trying to find the right shoes and all of my time is consumed by that I need to lose weight or I need to gain weight I need to take away my pimple I need to make my teeth wider <laughs> you know all of those times you know from the moment that i knew that there was going to be a hiring probably just a week from now the whole week i'll be going to sm to ayala trying to find an outfit then i'm going to stress about my pimple and then i'm going to do a facial mask just to try to look to take care of my skin and then i will go to the salon to do my nails and uh, my nails done which is highly recommended you should get your nails done when you are going to apply for the flight attendant position but it shouldn't revolve only around your nails your face your makeup your your um, outfit and your shoes because most of the time everybody else is already pretty everybody else is already you know um, looking sharpest on that interview day and if you just prepare on that aspect then you will be like on the same playing level field as everybody else um, you won't have anything else to offer aside from your looks and your grooming and your clear skin and perfect body right so what else can you offer if everybody is like you everybody is well groomed looking their sharpest on the day itself usually what will happen with me before is 
while I was waiting in line to be interviewed next, that's the time that I would practice what will I say when they ask me, tell me about yourself. You know, I will practice while I was in line or I will research on the computer that time on the day before I go out to the venue. I will research, I will Google um, what do I know about Saudi, what are what is Saudi all about, and then I will write it down on my notes. And on my commute, that's where I would review the things I learned about the 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 airline company that I am applying for. <laughs> and so I haven't really crafted my answers. I really don't have any ready answers. I am a nervous wreck. I'm stressed out. And when I look at the other candidates, they look so pretty and so nice. So I will be like so stress level to the roof. So yeah. Um that's my biggest mistake. <laughs> um, focusing on the physical aspect, focusing on my looks, my insecurities, uh, my weaknesses. I I didn't really I didn't really realize that that was just one step. You know, the, all those things are just uh, for you to enter the door. Okay, it's just all those are just preliminary requirements and then there are other requirements that you need to prepare for for example you need to study English and math because there's gonna be English and math test once you pass the initial interview uh, usually for Pal Express even now they would put you into the testing um, stage right away you have to answer English questions math questions and there's a time limit for every question that you have so it's time pressured and then I didn't know that you will be you will be selected by observing your behavior so if they're observing my behavior during the flight attendant interview all they will see is I'll be looking at the mirror like 100 times per minute right because I'm checking my appearance and I will be um, fidgeting trying to memorize cramming and everything so I'm not poised at all I'm not uh, a good representation of somebody who has um, the bearings of a flight attendant because I'm a nervous wreck <laughs> at the at the lining area okay at the venue itself so if somebody were to assess me during that time I wouldn't pass because I'm just cramming my way out of it trying to wing it I didn't really prepare all I prepared was my makeup and my outfit and my shoes <laughs> okay it's funny now but yeah so here are some tips that I'd like to share with you if you are applying to be a flight attendant and you want to avoid all the mistakes that I made tip number one don't waste all of your time focusing on your appearance your grooming and your uh, business attire outfit and and because everyone is doing the same thing you have to have one more thing so it's okay to get that all settled early on get your outfit settled early on and your shoes settled early on your makeup settled early on and have it prepared that you still have time to do other things so what are the other things that you need to do you need to research the airline itself the company that you're applying for their history their tagline their ceo what are their culture what are their values keyword values and uh, what are their plans in the future are they expanding are they opening new flights are they doing new hubs things like that also you have to repair or research about the flight attendant job roles and responsibilities because you will base all the answers that you will say to the recruiter on this information because the interview is all about trying to see if you can be a flight attendant it's a flight attendant interview and you're a flight attendant candidate so how will you tell the recruiter that I can be a flight attendant you tell them that you have all the qualities you demonstrate you give example and then you're knowledgeable about the job itself okay not just the perks but the job so what do I mean you have to be knowledgeable about ano ba talagang ginagawa ng flight attendant on a daily basis? What are their priorities? What are they doing? What types of qualities make a successful flight attendant? So that's what you need to research on. Okay, so aside from those things that I have mentioned, you have to prepare. Prepare ready answers. I know you want to be authentic. You want to be the real you during the interview, right? But you can still be real you when you have practiced your answer. 
what I'm just saying is that decide on what you want to say for different types of questions. For example, tell me about yourself, what is your weakness, and why should we hire you? You should decide what are the basic ideas that you want to share during these questions. And then, on the day itself, your body is a nervous wreck. You are like shaking because you're so nervous. And if you practice the words that you want to say, you put it up nicely, you put a nice sentence how you want to say it, you put, you practice where are you gonna pause, where you're gonna smile before saying it, then your body has motor skills, right? Your muscles, your tongue is a muscle, and it will have a muscle memory. So even though you're nervous during that day, since you already practice how to say uh, what you want to say, you will be able to remember everything. Even though sometimes you go black out already, it's like the words are just coming out of your mouth because the reason for that is you already practiced your words, your ideas that you want to say. If you could, if you could decide down to the tiniest sentence, to every sentence, if you could decide that this is my answer to this kind of question, then it will be perfect, okay? Um, that's the first part of preparing your answer. The next part of preparing your answer is preparing the delivery. So some people, when you say prepare your answers or memorize your answer, what they imagine is somebody who is saying the answers from memory like a robot. <laughs> I am 12 years old, I am from Mahati City, and I want to be a doctor one day. You know, that's what you remember, well, that's what you picture out if you say prepare answers beforehand, right? But those are for kids. Now that we're adults, we can memorize the answer, but, but, this is what makes it spontaneous. This is what makes you a winner candidate. The next thing that you should do is you should also practice and prepare how you are going to deliver those answers, you know. So this is the trick of beauty pageant candidates or beauty pageant schools. This is what they train during beauty pageant schools. You already memorize the answer. It's a really nice, well-written, uh, well-written, you know, beauty contest answer already but when you deliver it don't deliver it like it's a memorized thing you're just delivering it in school you have to deliver it with feelings with pauses with smile with effect you know so that's how you win the q a portion of a beauty contest i'm just kidding that's how you win also on the flight attendant interview or any interview itself so you already memorized the words now you practice how you deliver it so to practice all you have to do is just look at the mirror and see for yourself like how do i look like when i'm saying this am i too intense am i too like you know too intense when saying the words that i have memorized or you know you have to practice the emotions that you're saying you could say like for example if you want to say tell me you answer the question tell me about yourself you have to practice when are you gonna pause when are you going to be smiling when are you going to be like um, serious you know which part of the sentence are you going to do that so an example is you know my answer on my previous video when I say it without you know uh, without performance level you know <laughs> performance level chuva this is how it looks like I have a passion for customer service in my two years working from a call center i have now honed the skill of turning a customer's smile frown into a smile so you see the difference <laughs> if i say it with the practice okay when i practice the delivery so this is again how i deliver it with performance level attitude <laughs> okay. i have a passion for customer service in my two years experience of working in a call center i have now mastered the skills of turning my customer's frown into a smile. See? You know, nagpo-project ka, nagpo-project ka even though it's not the camera, it's not an acting class. You're just talking to a recruiter but you still have to project, you know, to give impact to your words. Okay, so enough about that. The next thing is Things that, uh, things that are not technical, okay? But things that really affect you when you are applying. You also have to prepare emotionally. Your emotions. You have to check your emotions. Are you ready to get out of the country? 
because if not it's gonna sabotage you during the interview day okay so you have to really picture yourself out you are already in Saudi or you're already in Qatar and you're having fun there's no fear you know you have to deal with the fears that might come out before even going to the interview because maybe dun mo lang maalala na ay muslim pala doon i'm so scared i don't know people who are muslim you know i don't know their culture ano baka ano mangyari sa akin no, you know all those fears we all have those fears and it's normal because we're human so you have to deal with them the good thing is you can research now there's a lot of vlogs there's a lot of you know information on the internet on how it is like to live in another country or how is it like to work for this company you know so you can prepare yourself emotionally for the transition because it's a life-changing career all right uh, the last but not least tip that I have for you is you have to raise your vibration energy sabi nga di ba ni Vice Ganda or energy <laughs> dapat talaga mataas ang energy mo kasi yun yung nafe-feel sa'yo ng tao Kahit na hindi ka pa nagsasalita, even if we're not talking it, the people who you meet or the people who sees you or gets in, you know, interacts with you will remember how you feel like. Are you like a happy person? Um, do you have a happy energy? Or are you a nervous wreck? Is that the energy that you're giving off? Not sure of yourself, scared, you know, you try to raise your energy. So how do you do it? Um, I have a lot of tips in my previous videos, so some of them, and also in my book, I said that um, to raise your energy, you have to listen to good music, high vibrational music. It could be praise songs, it could be inspirational songs about flying. You have to um, imagine yourself as a flight attendant already. Think happy thoughts. Uh, think what would it be like how nice would it be if you are walking in the airport with your trolley and your uniform? How would you feel when you're doing that? So those thoughts, happy thoughts, will raise your vibration. And also, listening to really good music uh, about flying will actually, it, for me, it immediately raise my vibration and puts me in a good mood. So if you're in a good mood and the recruiter is having a crabby mood, they will be attracted to you. They don't know why, they don't know how. Maybe you stumble in your words but they like your attitude, they like your aura, they like your energy. So you have to work on these things before the interview itself. It doesn't happen overnight. You really have to work on yourself to do all of it. So yeah, being applying for the flight attendant position is not all about just the clothes, the makeup and everything. Yes, it is that plus many many other factors and things i do hope that this video helped you out and if it did do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to get more tips like this and yeah i wish you all the best on your application please do remember my tips and i will fly with you soon good luck bye